pre-dawn in Plattsburgh, New York. The gas station is also the bus stop. Taxis idle, waiting for the fares they know are coming as the bus from New York City wheels in. It's been a long ride in the middle of the night, even a longer journey before. Where did you come from? Nigeria. Nigeria. Yes. These are not ordinary travelers. They're on a pilgrimage. Are you going to Roxham Road? Yes. Yeah. Roxham Road is the way to a better life, they believe, better than the reality they leave behind. This 30-minute ride has become an underground pipeline for people using the U.S. as a jumping-off spot for a chance at sanctuary in Canada. Right onto Roxham, Road. Roxham Road is a one-way route out of the U.S. Just ahead, where the road ends is the border with Canada. As the shuttle arrives and those passengers clamber out, they collect up their belongings, everything they can possibly carry. The RCMP is waiting. This is not illegal port of entry. This is an illegal point. This is not a yes, way to come in. Yes, okay. no. okay. Does anybody have a valid visa currently for the United States? Even if it expires soon? Yes. 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 Are you aware that the very minute you cross this border, your status in the United States is nullified? Yes. 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 The RCMP is obligated to tell them with one step across, they will be arrested. But still, if they can slip into Canada, they will be considered for asylum status. And that sliver of hope is enough for desperate people. Just because you come here doesn't mean you get to stay. Yes, yes, yes. And, we, and, we, and we believe in these. Yes. Do you have any questions for me? No, no, no. We just want to no. come in, that's it. No. Please. For the fact that we believe in Canada, that Canada that's can solve idea. our problem. That's why we are here. We are saving And we don't Canada. have any other choice to go we back. We don't have any other place to go back. Our mind is made up. We want to come, into, want to Canada. come into Canada. That's but this is a mock standoff, really. Almost no one who comes here turns away. One man fed up with waiting just walks on by undeterred, seemingly oblivious to the RCMP warnings. Which sets the others in motion. Some of these families appear to have flown into New York City, bussed up here, maybe on U.S. tourist visas. Others have been living temporarily in the U.S., like Lillian. How did you find out about this route? I, I, I also see on the TV, oh. yes, and I went to Google, I went to search Google, and I figured out this is what everybody's doing, that Canada has a future for the children, for everybody. So that's why I want to give it a chance. It's, it's a risk. I understand that. I want to take the risk because I know there's a future here for me and the baby. Why don't you stay in the United States? Because Donald Trump don't want me to stay in the United States. He said he, don't, he doesn't want immigrants. I'm illegal in the United States because I only have visa. And if you don't want me, I cannot stay there. When is your visa up? You already have. It, it, it got expired on July, last, uh, about a couple of months ago. So my baby is citizen, but I don't care because I believe Canada has better offer than the United States can offer me. Do you think Canada will let you stay? Yes, they will Why let me stay. Why do you think that? Because I'm not going back. They don't have a choice then to let me stay. That's why. No matter what the Canadian government does to slow down the influx, they're still coming. Just in August, look how many crossed over right here. More than 5,000. And so many were kids, over 1,100. Now, not as many Haitians, but clearly word's gotten out in the Nigerian community. Who's next? Those families that you just saw are now in those white tents getting criminal checks by the RCMP. They'll be taken later today by bus to another processing facility. This has really evolved into an entrenched system here. You know, those cabbies and the RCMP, they check the Greyhound bus tracker and the flight schedule to know when to expect people. There's two more buses coming today, a couple of flights, and each one brings more people to this spot. Roxham Road has fast become the busiest illegal crossing into Canada. This year, almost 12,000 made the trek, not even counting September. And in Plattsburgh, 
It's creating a flush new economy vulnerable to abuse. Back at the bus station, local taxi drivers compete to scoop up passengers. Hey guys, hi. This ain't on film, is it? Yeah. No, I don't want my picture taken. The okay. owner of Northern Taxi was fined for gouging migrants, charging three times a reasonable fare to the border. So the drivers are twitchy, but they've seen a lot. It's a tragedy, honestly. It's like straight up, it's a tragedy. I feel fucking shitty for these people because they ain't got no other choice. Like, they got to give up everything. I couldn't imagine that, honestly. I could not put myself in their shoes and have to give up what they have to give up. But, like, all we can do is do our job and they want us to take us somewhere, we take them somewhere. I try to help them and I coach them and I'm sorry. And I've been yelled at many times by your guards over there, but you know what? It, it, if they're family and they look like the people that need it, I'm gonna help them. Joe Remistala says he's made enough from trips to the border this summer to take the winter off. So they go across the border and what do you do? Well, they'll give me a phone number to call. Would you please call my papa or whatever when we go over? Because like I said, there no one's really sure what's physically going to happen once you cross that little imaginary line. Some people are really scared. So when you when you call that family, what happens? Well, uh, some will have a breakdown of crying. And then some will say that my other uncle is going to come next Friday. You get a lot of that. Do you figure that this is just going to keep going? My feeling is why they keep the border open. You have somewhat small control over who's coming in your country. That's how I feel. Because when they close that little road, there's 50 other roads. Border running in the Champlain Valley is not new. Plattsburgh was part of the Underground Railway for American slaves making their way north to Canada. There's over 500 kilometers of frontier where New York, New Hampshire, and Vermont butt up against Canada. And Roxham Road isn't the only place people jump the border. We can actually get up to the border and patrol east and west. Brad Brandt is a supervisor with the U.S. Border Patrol. He's brought us to another spot in Vermont, where people are also border jumping. This road comes in from Canada, stops right here with this barrier that one of the local residents put up. So they drive along this road? Yep. And, get and they off. just hop over the logs and... They're in Canada. So we've had people, just like at the Roxham Road, we've had people that fly into JFK, um, take a bus to Burlington, take a taxi from Burlington to this location, enter Canada and get arrested by the RCMP and claim asylum. And do you think the messaging was that Canada was open to this? I think that's what the Premier said right up front, didn't Prime the Prime Minister? Minister? The Prime Minister said that right up front, right? And so I think people took that literally. Close to the international border, Brandt tells us his officers can only apprehend border jumpers who are illegally in the U.S. If they have a valid visa, like a tourist visa, he can't touch them. And many come into the U.S. that way. This is it. Roxham Road. Roxham Road. So what did this look like before all this, Tent City? Um, there were two roads and these rocks. And that was he points out that all the attention on this hot spot here at Roxham Road has made this place more secure, but there's a downside. There's a bunch of guys here that aren't patrolling the rest of the, the border that we share together, that's our border to secure, and they can't help us if they're, they're focused here. So we both countries pay a cost for it. Trump's anti-migrant warnings are propelling people north, running the border here instead of crossing at the official border nearby. You're telling them to go to the other border crossing. Yeah, they're going to have to pay me for another fare. The cab don't wait around, you know what I mean? Next year, temporary protected status for many in the U.S. may not be renewed, so more will come, some of them utterly desperate, like Aisha, Nigerian, alone, with four kids. She bussed up here from Philadelphia via New York. How long have you been in America? Close to a year now. Uh -huh. There's no job with four children. No job, nothing, no place to live. We used to go to church, to go to mosque, yeah. to, to 
beg for money or food for our children. Now they don't want to take them in school. Are you? Do you have legal papers to stay in America? I don't have legal paper. Right. I don't have legal paper. I left Nigeria with, with uh, frustration. I get to America, it's even worse. Look at my kids. Please, we need a home. Yeah. We need home. You need our, a home. Our children need to go to school. Mm -hmm. in, in Africa, those, those children, they don't want them to go to school. They, 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 they want them to go for uh, Arabic school. At the, at the tender, ten, uh, tender age, they, they will give them to man. Do you think you'll be able to stay in Canada? I can work. I can work. I'm an African woman. If I see a job, I will do it. I want to take care of my children. I want better life for children. Steps from Canada, these migrants are powerless. They will be arrested. If they are refused status in Canada, they won't get back to America. They'll be sent home to the countries they left. Canada is urging them to apply at the official border, the front door, but it's holding the back door open. And for migrants, that means at least one foot in. Susan Ormston, CBC News, near Plattsburgh, New York.